Morning guys, as I was getting ready for my morning video with you, I was thinking, gosh, what am I gonna talk about today? <laughs> and I thought, what is the one of the big questions that I get asked often, and that is, I'm a keynote speaker, so a lot of new speakers or speakers who are struggling to get into the speaking circuit will ask me, how do you book gigs? Um, so the tips that I'm gonna share with you are after you've done the things like you know, practice your craft and studied other speakers and all of those things that make you a great speaker. I've been speaking for about eight years uh, from a big stage and getting paid for it for about five years. So I've got five tips that I'm gonna share with you today that I hope you find super helpful. And I wrote them down because I didn't wanna forget them. <laughs> so the first one is always give your audience some kind of a transformation. And that that's kind of along with becoming a great speaker, but I will tell you I've seen so many speakers who are really polished on stage, but they don't really leave you with something that's going to transform your life. That can be personal, that can be professional. You want them to walk away with something that they're going to do differently. And I'm always a big fan of giving them something as well. So um, a tip sheet or a guide or some templates, really focusing on how much you can give them in your presentation and providing them something that's really going to change. And you may be thinking, well, you know, my stuff isn't like life changing. Well, it is if you're making their lives easier. So like, let's say that you're a, an accountant, right? And you're speaking to a group of accountants at, at a breakout session for a conference and you're sharing with them a method or a tool that had made a huge difference to you, well, that is transformational for them. So it doesn't have to be like the great big lofty things, but you absolutely have to give a transformation. Um, the other thing, I guess I might have six things. So the other thing is never ever um, allow how much you're getting paid to be the thing that drives how much you prepare. So whether you're getting paid your biggest speaking engagement gig ever, let's say you're getting $15,000 for a keynote or you're doing a free webinar, it doesn't matter. You've got to put the same level of content and prep and really giving into that presentation because even though you're getting paid a certain amount of money, the people in the audience are paying you with their time. They're giving you probably an hour of their lives. <laughs> and so you really wanna approach each of your engagements in a way that is giving them something for the value that they're giving you. And it doesn't matter if you have 500 people or five people, you've got to really think about, gosh, you know, these people are giving me their time and that is by far the most valuable resource that we have. Um, the other tip is use a call for speakers strategically. For a couple of years, I submitted hundreds of calls for speakers. So I've got some pretty good data on it and I will tell you, I've booked somewhere between one to 2% of the call for speakers that I send out. So, you know, if I send 100, I get one or two gigs and that's not a really good return on investment for your time. Now, I do think using them strategically can be super helpful. So I'm not saying don't use them, but don't let that be the main way that you get speaking gigs, which leads into my next tip, which is build your speaking brand. LinkedIn is a great place to do that. You can do that on YouTube. I know speakers who've been very successful on Instagram. Think about who is your target audience and build your brand on that platform and you know share information about the this the presentations the speeches the webinars that you have coming up build relationships with other speakers and event organizers on those platforms and really set yourself up as a brand uh, which also includes having a website by the way uh, so even if you're thinking oh, I don't have a website and that's so complicated it's not you can go I have mine built on Squarespace I built it the first page in a weekend you can google youtube how to do that and build your speaking page um, another thing i guess i have more than five i thought i had five but now that i'm talking i have more than that uh, another tip that i have for you and i learned this one the hard way is have a speaking reel that is so important because event organizers are, are not going to want to take a chance on putting you in front of their audience um, if you don't have a speaking reel, like you can write a great proposal, you may be good over the phone, but 
mm, if they can't see you perform, they're going to be hesitant to bring you on board. I, one of my um, early gigs, I almost got, I lost, and I called the event organizer for feedback, and she said, everything was great, but Carly, you don't have a speaking reel, and I can't put you in front of 800 people without having seen you present and knowing that you can handle that audience. It was the best advice that I had gotten up to that point. And man, right away, I jumped on how to get a speaking role. I may make that one of my, um, one of my next video. But anyway, make sure you have a speaking role. And then when you're working with event organizers, and I always say this uh, to my event organizers, is I'm gonna be the easiest speaker you've ever worked with. And you know, that really resonates with them because, oh my gosh, I, I cannot even imagine that job. They've got so many details that they've got to follow up on and they're putting their reputation on the line when they bring you in as a speaker. So what does it mean to be the easiest speaker and event organizers ever worked with? A uh, couple of things. So you are, you always return everything before the deadline that has been set, whether that's your your bio your headshot uh, i was working with someone i'm doing a, a webinar for yesterday and i had committed a couple days ago to getting her a one minute promo video by sunday delivered it yesterday you know so yeah you're gonna always be ahead of the curve um, when you arrive at the event you're going to text them and let them know you're there you will you know uh, think of different ways to bring value to their event when you're talking through the event with them you know you hear them say you know well here's what my audience is really struggling with would you like me to create a tip sheet i can create a quiz that can help them identify you know wh what they need to do next so just being always um, looking for ways to add value and that also includes responding very very quickly to their emails <clears throat> because again they're going through so many details and when you show up you respond you know, you're constantly exceeding their expectations. They're gonna remember that. And uh, you're gonna, that's the way that you start building the relationship. So with event organizers, you know, some speakers will think, well, you know, I did the event, so that's over. You know, no, <laughs> you wanna continue to build that relationship with them <clears throat> and even referring other speakers to them. They're gonna continue to create these events and you can reach out to them, you know, a couple times a year and say, hey, what are you working on? Just wanna see how I can help. Um, if you let me know the theme of your next event, I may know a speaker you know, that could fit and they will appreciate that. So when it comes to your event organizers, absolutely you wanna be the easiest speaker that they've ever worked with. And then my last um, tip for today is build alliances with other speakers. So meet the other speakers at conferences, reach out to them on LinkedIn, get in speaking groups and build one-on-one -on -one relationships. I, I have learned so much for other speakers that I have built a connection with. And a couple of the things that you learn are what not to do, right? So they'll share with you the things that they've done that haven't worked. You can share with them the things that you're working on, what's going well, what isn't working for you. And you know, it's, you'll be surprised how much they share. So I talk about how much I get paid for speaking engagements with my speakers. Now that might surprise you. It's um, usually seen as uh, just kind of not cool to talk about how much money you make. But when it comes to things like speaking engagements, listen, we're all hungry to figure out what is that right mix. So I was on the phone with one of the women that I collaborate with. We've been on calls for probably two years now. And I was sharing a new product that I was creating. And she said, how much are you charging for that, Carla? And I said, $800. And she, there was a silence and she's like, have you lost your mind? Like, you need to charge like four times that much. Let me tell you what I'm doing and how much I'm getting paid. And let me tell you what Sue's doing and how much she's getting paid. You need to charge more. And then, you know, we kind of talked through that. So you're really gonna get a feel for what is the going price in the market. Um, you'll talk about different tools and systems and things that are working well for you. They'll share their resources, their contracts. Um, uh, ways that they have conversations that are helping them book gigs like it is it's amazing how much your fellow speakers will share with you and then um, the last thing that I have written down is 
we also refer each other. You know, it's funny because when I tell that to people who are not in the speaking um, world or they're just starting to get into paid speaking, they're really surprised by that. But other speakers are not your competition, especially when it comes to keynotes because an event organizer is not gonna bring, they're not gonna bring me back over and over again to be the keynote speaker. It doesn't matter if I'm the most amazing speaker they've ever had on stage, their audience expects variety. And so, you know, when you build that community of other speakers, they will then refer you to their past clients or if, if they're talking to someone and they realize, you know what, I'm really not the right person for you, but I think I know who is, they'll refer you then as well. So build that community of speakers and just get really real with them. Talk about the things that you're struggling with and you're gonna learn so much. So I guess what started out as five tips is probably like 20 tips. Uh, I hope you found this helpful if you're someone who's breaking into the speaking arena and if there's something that you want me to dig, in, dig into a little bit more, let me know in the comments. It might be, you know, how to work with event organizers or creating that speaking reel. I'm glad to do that on a video on another day. Hope you guys have a wonderful morning and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.